Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, slide on over, press the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up if you enjoy this video at the end. So, today I'm going to give you a little tour around the farm. Well, welcome to Great Brook Farm. We're located in Carlisle, Massachusetts. It's a family uh, dairy operation. We actually farm in a thousand acre state park, which is a little interesting. Clearly, we've watched some of the other videos, saw how many people. Uh, so as you first get in here, um, well, let me go back. The park is open to the public. Up where we farm isn't open to the public due to liability. Um, around work and equipment stuff like that we do sell compost so we do get a lot of traffic flow in and out for compost but walking around so got our shop behind us this is the driveway a lot of people have asked me why there's a deal of valve van i work for the local deal of valve dealer i do robot robots i used to work for the corporate deal of valve doing robots but now i work for the local deal of valve dealer so along with here's the 7520 and if you will on any of the other social media then watch me you'll see that it's in pieces so that vibration was a diff differential pin broke the bolt came out destroyed a bunch of stuff i got a donor transmission that i'm gonna get out in iowa along with some other things um so we're gonna have an adventure video so got a john deere skid steer that uh snapped the crankshaft so that's been at the machine shop. It's been a while, but no rush for it back. Uh, I think they're finishing it up. So what we got going on here is some young stock. Um, they got some access over to the side. Um, they're three months to like six months. And then we got three pastures right out the front here that we put dry cows and some heifers in it. Mostly used for a dry cow side of it. Um, pretty much it exercise recess to them so sister's horse i don't ride horses i'm looking here this is our old barn we'll take a step inside of it we used to milk uh 80 90 cows i think that was about it um in this tie stall barn so now it's just used for storage we were 3x in here that was almost 11 years we haven't been in here so we use it for straw and hay storage see they broke a bale here um so it used to go further down our ice cream stands in the end of it we have an ice cream stand we don't make our own ice cream uh we don't have town water there's some things like that but we sell 60 flavors or so um but this is what it used to be since then it's just uh storage mostly straw we do have some dry hay in here right now so pretty top-notch straw though so greg lloyd hooking it up so if you need some straw hit him up maple downs to greg lloyd um middle 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 middleburg new york there we go so jump back out Just storage, there's minerals in there, um, irrigation pump. The robot barns over there, we'll walk out there. So, got haylage here. Um, if you go back and watch the feeding video, which was like my first video that I really ever made, it explains a little more of what goes on here. So we got one bunk for haylage, we really need a second bunk. Um, straw apple pumice so this comes from somebody who supplies hard cider it's literally just squished apples so it smells like uh apple cider all the time which isn't a bad smell and that's round bales for heifer feed that they grind up so haven't got into any of our 2020 hay crop um we got round bales that we bought in baleage bales 
and big square bells that we bought in so but going around to here here's our corn pile so we put more feed in this year i guess they ran out of tires as they were covering it so this is still and it looks a little funky here this is still 2019 corn um i'm gonna say they got another month or two of this i hope they were a little feeding a little faster um but there is a lot of 2020 corn so most feed we've ever put up in there but we'll mosey around um to give you guys a little insight i farm with my father here i work for de laval or for the hanfield dairy equipment um, which is a deal valve dealership and then I own equipment of my own uh, manure calling the 7520 um, the Mac the chopper that is my own thing that's where Duffy Ag comes from um, and I plan on keep keep moving forward on that so so I bought this last year it's a 78 international with a Cummins in it um, it's a 6 plus 1 transmission nothing special super clean though 200,000 I think it was on um, double frame it's all mint so I put all this on to run the manure tank this is a 5400 gallon Hool manure tank um, was on a straight truck and I put it on a container chassis so awesome uh, got some plans for some more things like that I would love another semi since my other truck here this Mac it's a 87 um, with a 300 in it I got it with the whole manure tanker a 3750 I ended up getting this box so it slides on and off um, but it's on rails and hooks and everything um, pick those up bought this to go with it there's a whole video of that that goes on that so um, but I like running the semi I just get so much more done so this is my 1994 Claw 695 Forge Harvester. Kemper head was new this year. There's plenty of video of that running around, so go check that out. The Farms International, I forget what year this is. So, my hay head, 4230. Um, we got this with like 300 hours on it, four, maybe four or 500 hours um, from a guy in town that we run. We're actually borrowing this bale grinder, which is awesome. So, uh, they're over there moving the screener. Um, so they've been screening. We saw a lot of compost, like I said. We'll just give a quick tour of what goes on inside here. 7320, that's like an 04 double rake. So this is a robot barn, like I said, built in 2000, 2010. So, two robots running in here. Of course, D Laval robots. Um, this one is 11 years, will be 11 years old. This one is two years old. Um, we're milking just about 120 cows. Um, we're Agrimark producers. My father's a director for Agrimark, which owns Cabot Cheese. Um, with that being said, that's right about where we want to be 120 cows. Um, 10,000 pounds a day or so a little bit more right now um, but we have a base incentive that we can only ship so much milk along with a lot of people due to covid that got restricted big time so this will give you an idea um, on what goes on so before the state bought it they were here the previous owner before the state was here until 1977 this is what the barn used to look like farnham smith um, he sold the land in 74 to the state this is what the tie stall barn used to look like. So a lot of work, a lot of labor intensive. Nobody wants to milk cows at two in the morning, three in the morning. So, so this is all set up for tours to come through. Granted, um, due to COVID, no tours this year. Well, here's what goes on in the barn. I'll give a video at some point of the whole like day in the life in the barn. Um, but this is just giving you an overview. So we're a sawdust barn in here. We got sand in our heifers. Primarily sawdust here because of wear and tear, because of composting manure, and because we're in a slurry store manure system 
we did not want to have to dig it out all the time all the time so it's a warm day here the cows are bunching a little bit but we'll take a step out here so more equipment pull type chopper um cattle trailer dump wagon mowers single rake um br brilliant cedar spray our go uh, second gooseneck um with the water tank by first tanker that still has the wheels off of it so mixer tractor the hood is somewhere it does at one point i was gonna fix a slight little leak so this had like 13,000 hours on it it's a 2955 and the crank went so it sat for a while because of my ambition and motivation um but it's back mix and feed it's an animal so then we got my chain corn head fertilizer spreader mower my husky tank my parts chopper which is actually a pretty decent chopper um but we're gonna rob parts off of it so but the whole cutter heading housing i pulled out so that if i ever need to i can switch it i did steal some parts off of it got a pile of my spare tires but i got plans for things so we'll take a step over here if you go back watch some of the manure spreading videos we're gonna have another one when we get into it um it shows more of that so this is our slurry store it's all gravity flow manure comes out goes into a collection bin we have a separator we haven't used it in a few uh years because we have so much heifer manure because we expanded and everything else like that but the goal is to sell more and more um compost but i'd say by the time i'm going to get spreading that will be about halfway um so we figure that with the system will hold about 600,000 gallons um so i got to spread pretty late in the season um as far as making it all the way to springtime spreading if we have a long winter or whatnot like that we haven't really had that issue um just once back when we didn't spread our own manure but i started buying manure hauling equipment a few years ago and it it ends up good so it's a stinky job but somebody does it so that mixer tractor actually has a load of feed on it right now we're gonna jaws feed pusher um but they're gonna come in and dump that feed at some point it's a little sporadic in there so, but all holsteins closed herd my father's first generation farmer um so he went to university uh he graduated from university of minnesota with a degree in ag economics i believe i believe that's what it was so um he didn't milk a cow till he came out till he got out here um after school but we'll go through the barn like i said at some point just giving you guys a little tour so we hit a hundred thousand or wow a thousand subscribers the other day goal is a hundred thousand well now that we hit that goal so if you want to make sure you're subscribed i'd appreciate it so got a coon night manure spreader we windrow all our manure all the heifer manure side of it um and then it gets screened so we got dry cow temporary housing because when we moved out of the second robot we lost barn space uh so we hold like 20 20 animals here so here's where they are they rented a volvo um wheel loader so farm's got a bulldozer we used to do cranberries um so we had all sorts of equipment to do cranberries build it we rent this sc screener this is the second time we've run this one uh it's a mccluskey 516 we used to run the bigger one um but it was pretty aged there's the man who filmed there's ross so ross we're doing a whole intro of life he's just holding that down so this was new this year that's why we're not in a rush on the other skid steer don't like the cat skid steers as much as the john deere i just don't think they're as much of a machine so this is loam this is compost so our compost is aged for a year it's a low input low um activity setup so we're not turning it enough things like that so it takes a year 
um, and we pick up little pebbles it's not all on uh, cement or asphalt so that's why it gets screened um, but it's pure cow manure a little bit of horse manure for the bedding purpose of it and that is it so it doesn't have sticks and leaves and debris so you can retrade in there's no odor to that it grows awesome um, so if you're local make sure you hit us up for that we sell it by the yard uh, we sell it by the bag um, we have people come pick it up in their pickups their trailers so here's a little bit more of what's going on um, we do have a 924F uh, that needs a tor torque converter due to years of pushing snow and bunk. That's the Hool uh, 3750 that goes on the Mac, my trailer, the farm's Kodiak. If anybody wants a Kodiak, um, it's a gas motor. We got to take the body and put it on something else. Ackerman, like I said, we used to dig a lot of cranberries and did a lot of service like that. So comes in handy they're good machines volvo bought them out so parts are a little scarier but here's the barn so backside of uh the silos heifer facility we're in need of a heifer facility i had somebody comment um why don't we have this in underground storage so the the heifers are on on sand which anybody who dairy farms with sand knows it's abrasive knows it's hard to deal with as far as digging out it costs so they get cleaned manually get picked up and like i said most of it goes back out over there um and we actually age it for a year windrow it um and get it going that way so everybody in this group is pregnant um which is a good thing so our idea is we want them pregnant by 12 months um we grow some awesome calves and we carry it on um into our heifers and things like that uh we were like 120 percent heifers and that's what got us to being full with the second robot um since then we're a little more selective on what we want in the herd um and we do sell some heifers to keep our numbers down um because 120 cows is going to be our number uh we could do like 65 cows a robot. The barn doesn't really get to that. Um, and then it goes back to feed and how much milk we can actually ship. So most of our animals are extremely friendly because they see the public a lot. Um, because being in a state park up in the front up where the ice cream sand is, um, that makes for them being able to be pet. Uh, so with that being said, we got pregnant heifers here, which means they haven't had a baby before. Um, a heifer is a a heifer is a cow let me explain this yeah a heifer is a cow before it's had a baby um that made zero sense but yeah so then we got uh animals that could get pregnant that we would like in their age um they're in the right age group size and then at the far end we got some that are between um six months old so they move from that playground area over there right next to the horse and they're getting way too friendly so so they get moved over there they're in there from six um to 11 months and then they get switched over but yeah so we put a lot of feed into that so we don't use any of the upright silos um just not enough space um to actually store what we need so we use headlocks to catch cows as far as breeding them and preg checks we work with tufts veterinary school as far as our vets um out of connecticut there's just not a lot of dairy ginkos running around there's not a lot of dairy that actually is around um so getting vet services and, and stuff like that's very challenging there is the 30 20 that has a hole in the block and it's pretty much just a yard piece now so we got some chickens ducks goats sheep uh, rabbits you see just free range chickens so this came from the same place where the 4230 was um we got it at a good price ran it for five years six years and then uh one day it decided it wanted to go knock knock and well there you go, you can see it. So 3020s are expensive and hard to find a block for. So it's not like a 4020. So here it sits as a yard piece. 
I don't know where he ain't going. Just out wandering. So this is the end of the barn ice cream stand. Um, so like I said, people can come right up. They can pet the animals, see the animals, um, and so on. So Pile's a little ridiculous. That is facer's never gonna reach it so go back into the old barn so this is what a upright silo looks like so back in the day they enjoyed it they actually had five of these if the pictures are right if i can remember right on the pictures and they tore them down and they buried a pond on the one side of the where the horse and the pasture was and they made a pond on the other side so a little different um but yeah i'm not a big silo fan i don't like heights to begin with so back into the old barn more spare parts dirt bike this used to be the milk house now it's pretty much just a mess and spare parts and all sorts of things lots of parts that are fun i'll right, take a step back outside so these are the manure bags we sell them open to the public parts for the chopper i gotta clean my mess up but yeah that'll be enough for right now i think um like i said i want to do a whole video of what goes on at the barn uh and the day in the life of a cow in the barn so but i really appreciate you guys watching hope you learned something hope i answered some of the questions that were coming across in the comments um as far as who we are what we do um who I am, why that's always in every video. Um, I do have a pickup, but I drive my service van all the time. So make sure you go like and subscribe. Like I said, I'm going to pick up a donor transmission and I got two other stops to do. So it's gonna be a little adventure. I might have some celebrity guests join in. Um, but it's like 40 hours of driving for what I'm gonna go get. So I figure there's gonna be some action, maybe some cool pit stops. So. Thanks for watching. Go like, subscribe. See you in the next video.